we have many treatments for neuroendocrine tumors, and they can start from um, resection, not only from the primary tumor where the, the cancer or the, or the tumor started, to even having resections of disease that has spread to other organs, such as the liver. So surgery is number one. Then we have um, hormone treatments, such as somatostin analogs, which is um, an injection that typically you have um, once every four weeks. We also have um, target therapy with medications like um, everolimus and sunitinib. Then we have cytotoxic um, chemotherapy. Um, there are different drugs for that, but the ones that are typically currently most used are capecitabine and temozolomide. We also have what's called liver-directed therapy, and there are different ways of liver-directed therapy. You can do blend embolizations that you just shut down the supply of the blood vessels on the, on the liver. Uh, you can do radioembolizations when you give um, um, radiation um, in a way to the liver, or you can do chemoembolizations when you actually inject a little bit of chemotherapy directly in the um, liver. Uh, then you have um, peptide receptor uh, radiotherapy, which is PRT, which is uh, hopefully will be approved soon um, in the United States. So there are plenty of options for patients with um, neuroendocrine tumors. When I meet with a patient, I discuss with them about the use of somatostin analogs. I tell them there are um, hormones that will be working similar to a hormone that's produ produced uh, by their bodies, and then they will shut down some of the symptoms related to their tumors if they are having symptoms, and also shut down the growth of these tumors. I tell them that is um, a shot in their um, bottom, or their butt, that's how I, I, I joke with my patients. Um, every, typically every four weeks, sometimes there is some variation depending on how well you're controlling the symptoms um, on your uh, patients. Um, I tell that um, these uh, therapies are very well tolerated. You typically don't see uh, significant side effects. Um, I also tell my patients that you have two different um, brands from two different companies. Um, there haven't been a trial or a study comparing one versus the other. So in the community, we feel that they can be um, exchangeable. Um, I tell the advances of one over the other. One, uh, perhaps the cost could be um, a little bit less, but has a longer needle that will require um, um, the injection to be intramuscular versus the other one, which is lanreotide, which is a deep subcutaneous injection that perhaps will be a little bit less uh, painful. This is based on anecdotal data that I get um, feed, uh, in terms of feedback from my patients. So I um, help them with this information to decide which one we will pick over the other. In the, in the current era that we live, I think it's important to take into account um, cost as well as um, how practical it is for the patients to get one treatment over the other. In terms of um, tumor control, um, I think ocreotide and uh, loreotide are very similar. When you think about um, symptom control, they both have their indication. In on practical ways, um, lanreotide is felt to be a faster um, administration, so patients say that they, they, they don't have to wait so long to get it because it's already mixed and is a one injection to go. When ocreotide, you actually have to check in, the nurse has to mix, and that takes a little bit longer, and patients often get frustrated, frustrated with that because you have to think about someone that is having this treatment for you know, three, four, five years sometimes, it gets old in a way. So they, that can affect a little bit the quality of life, how much you have to wait every time that you get your shot. Um, also, um, ocreotide, you're supposed to get into the uh, muscle, is an intramuscular injection. So um, the nurse that is giving the injection have to be really comfortable in how to give it, otherwise it can be a quite painful um, shot. So what I see many times, and then patients identified one nurse in the clinic that knows how to do it, and request that nurse on over and over again because they feel more comfortable. Uh, Loreotide is a deep subcutaneous in injection, so anecdotally, patients feel that it hurts less. Um, there, there are no trial that has been done comparing one versus the other, but that's what the feedback that I get from my patients in clinic.